Hey guys, William Justice here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve and Fusion, and today we're going to do some experiments with Fusion, a little bit of masking, and see what we can do, and take a look at, and see what's inside my head. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a while. Um, I did it I did it a while back, but I wanted to make it a little bit better, and I thought there was more I could do with it. Some experimentation, and we're gonna dive into Fusion and see if we can make something interesting. Now, to get this effect to work, we're going to be masking out my head and my body, and we're gonna be placing that on the background, and we're gonna take the head and shift it up like that. And we're gonna be, wanna be able to see what's behind my head, and since I'm blocking it out, we need to get a clean plate of what's behind me. To start out, you need to make sure that you have the camera in manual focus. So you can see when I get closer, it's gonna be a little bit blurrier. I don't use manual focus a lot, but hopefully I got it pretty close. Um, I guess we'll have to see when I load up the video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step out of frame and we're gonna get the clean plate behind me so that when we take my head and shift it around, we'll be able to see the background. If you're enjoying this video and you wanna learn how to do these effects or other effects, um, please like and subscribe. I really, I really appreciate everyone's support. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Let's dive in. We're gonna start slicing up my head and see how we can create this kind of an effect. To set up the split head effect, I have uh, two clips here. I have, the clip of, I have the clip where I'm looking around and you'll notice my head is moving a little bit. Unfortunately, it's really hard to move your eyes around and not move your head. Um, try it sometime, it's not so easy. Anyway, um, so we're gonna do some, we're gonna have to do some stabilization to fix that. So the clip where I'm looking around is on top and I'm gonna disable that. And then we have a clean plate underneath. So we'll be able to move my head around and see what's behind my head. All right, let's get into Fusion. We're gonna right click on the top clip and say new Fusion clip and get into Fusion. All right, you'll see my head is moving around. So the first thing we're gonna do is stabilize that. Okay, we'll click off the nodes and hit control space and type in planar tracker. Take the output of media in one and put it into the planar tracker. Two, so we can see the planar tracker in the viewer. Let's make sure we're on the first frame and we're just gonna draw a shape around my head. And this is the, it's gonna track everything inside of this shape. In the inspector, let's set it to hybrid point area. The motion type is translation, rotation, and scale. And then we're gonna hit the track forward button. Then select the planar tracker and we're going to hit uh, create planar transform. And we're gonna move that off to the side. So we're gonna use this in just a second. So in the planar tracker, we're gonna set the operation type to steady. And you'll notice that once we do that, you'll see the, the image shifts around. You can see we have a border on the left. It kind of moves around and it's keeping my head steady and it's moving everything else around it. So that what this means is we can apply the effect right where my head is and we're not gonna have to do any um, animations or keyframing on the effects. They're just gonna stay right where we want them. Let's take the output of the planar tracker and put it into the planar transform and then we're gonna take that and put it into the media out. So we're basically bypassing what we had before. This one is gonna um, stabilize and steady the, the image. And this one's gonna reapply the motion so that the media out is going to look like the original. But we're gonna apply the effects inside of this area right here so that they're gonna be stabilized. Next, let's use the magic mask to mask out my head and body. So we're gonna to go to the first frame with the planar tracker selected, hit control space and type in magic mask. Now, you could use regular masking to do this, um, but I have the studio version, which does have magic mask, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. It's a little bit easier, saves a touch of time, but you can also do this with regular masking. And we're just gonna draw a line right on my body there, put the magic mask in the viewer, and you'll see it kind of selected it. And we're gonna hit track forward, and it's gonna go through each of the frames and pick out where my um, head and body are. All right, now that we have that track, we're gonna split it right across my head using a couple of matte control nodes. So hit control space and type in matte control. We'll add that in and let's add one more. Okay, so we have both of these. We're gonna take, let's move this down a little bit. We're gonna take the output of the magic mask and put it into each of the matte control nodes. And we just need to do some masking on those. Um, so outside of the matte control, we're gonna add a transform node on each of them. And this is gonna allow us to move everything Okay, let's do a little bit of masking. We're gonna create a bitmap mask to cut out the top and bottom portions of this image. Click in the node area and type in bitmap. And then into the bitmap, we're gonna add a rectangle mask and put it into the yellow input. And we're gonna put that in viewer one. So we got that black and white area. There's quite a few different ways to do this, but we're just gonna use a real quick garbage mat. Let's take the output of the bitmap and put it into the gray garbage mat input of the mat control and you'll see it kind of cut out that area. So let's go to the bitmap and we're just gonna invert it by clicking the invert. And we've selected 
that part of the image. So with the rectangle now, move this out and move that down. And this is going to be the bottom part. Now, I, what I did was I made it a little bit bigger, stretched it out, cut it right through where my forehead is. Adjusted the angle a little bit to kind of get it to line up a little bit better. We'll move it down. Okay, right in there. So that's where we're going to split the head. Now the next thing we're going to do, while we need to do is the top part now. So let's use another bitmap. And we're going to take the rectangle into this bitmap. Take the top bitmap and put it into the gray input on the mat control for the garbage mat. And let's put that in viewer 2. And there you go. So we have the top of my head isolated and the bottom isolated. We're going to do a little bit more in there, but this is just kind of getting started. The, uh, we're going to add a couple of merge nodes in here. Move this over a bit. So we're going to disconnect this right here, and we're just going to put in a background node. And we're going to merge those two. Um, we're going to merge the top and the bottom on top of this background. Put it into the planar tracker, and we're going to add a couple of merge nodes. The bottom half, which is right here, we're going to put it into the first merge node. And the top half, we're going to put it into the second. And let's take a look at the output. And with the background, we're going to go ahead and take the alpha all the way down. So now we can independently move the top and bottom halves. We've got this half right here. So now we're going to do, um, we're going to use an ellipse to kind of put the cutout where my head is. So let's move this down a little bit. And that's going to sit right on top here. So to do this, we're going to add another merge right in between here. I'm going to take a background node and just kind of put a color on it for now so we can see where it is. Let's take an ellipse mask and put that into the blue input. And then we're going to take the background two and put it into this merge node. And it's going to be sitting on top right there. So now we just need to adjust the ellipse, ellipse mask. Let's adjust the angle a little bit to kind of match up with what we had with the rectangle. Next time I just put a border around it to give it a little bit of depth. Let's move this over. we got one more merge coming in here. And this is, we're going to put the border into this. So we're going to take the ellipse and copy it. And we're going to paste an instance, which is control shift V. We're going to take another background node. We're going to de-instance the solid checkbox and we're going to de-instance the border width. And we'll put that into the background and put it into um, viewer one. I'm going to select background and viewer one. Now we're going to adjust the border width and uncheck solid. Bring the border down a bit. And then we're going to take this uh, background and merge it right on top. And let's take a look. So there we go. We kind of have a border where the cutout is. Let's make it a little bit thinner, and we're going to adjust the color. Click this uh, eyedropper and pick one of the colors off my from my skin to kind of make it match a little bit. Let's make it a little bit thinner. Move the border width down a bit. And the last thing I did is I actually added a shadow on it. So you select background three and type in drop shadow. And we're going to adjust the strength, and there's the angle. Take the blur down so you can kind of see it. Let's adjust the angle so it's kind of right in here. Move the distance down. And we've got a little shadow there. Add some blur. It kind of gives it, it gives it a little bit of depth. There's different ways to play with this, but this is kind of just a real quick way to do it. So you notice that the drop shadow kind of goes outside of my uh, outside of this line on top of my head. So we just need to mask that off. So all we're going to do. So let's take the original ellipse mask and put it into the mask input of the drop shadow. And it's only going to have the effect apply inside of this mask right here. And once this is set up, we can um, adjust this as much as we want. Sometimes you need to adjust the height to get the correct perspective, height, width, and angle. You want it to kind of go to the where pretty much where the edge of your head is. So we'll bring it down a little bit and widen it out. That's close enough. And let's make this uh, background, we're going to make this kind of a white. The next part is we need to add that curve of that mask right back into the top of my head so that it fits. You'll notice that when, let's bring it, go ahead and bring that down. Um, we'll go to our transform nodes and we'll reset this one. And we'll reset this transform two. And you'll notice it doesn't fit. So what we need to do is take the original ellipse and just kind of bring it back up right where we want it in between that gap. So let's, uh, Going to move the top half up again, and we're going to put that ellipse right right up in there. And all we got to do is select the ellipse and adjust the Y position. We'll take the top part and reset it, and you'll see that we have that that part right there. So we need to add this ellipse mask into the top mask, so that it includes the bottom part of my forehead, right above my eyes. 
Okay, so to put that little curve in there, let's uh, take, take a look at the big picture here. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the ellipse, copy it, and we're going to bring it right up in here, hit Control shift v to paste an instance, and we just need to stick it right in between here, in between the rectangle and the bitmap at the top. So let's take a look at what the rectangle mask looks like right there. Take this ellipse, and we're going to drag it right in between here and the bitmap. So you can see that we have that little bump in the bitmap right there. In this case, we wanted to actually cut out. So with, with the garbage mat, the black part is actually what's being included. So let's take a look at the mat control. The mat control is here, and we'll put the bitmap right there. So what we need to do is take this ellipse, and we're going to say we're just going to subtract it. You see it just cut out right where the ellipse is. And when we look at our mask over here, the mat control, you can see it has the curve where the top part of my head fits into the bottom. So let's take a look at the end result here. And all we need to do is take the transform node and we can just kind of drop it down right on top. And there we go. So to do the effect, all I did was I animated this popping up and you can shift it over and do whatever you want. Now, when I did the other one where it split the head into two pieces, that got really crazy complicated. I'm not really a very organized person. Um, so it ended up looking like this. Let me show you. Okay, there you go. It's kind of crazy. It took me a little bit to get it figured out. It hurt my brain just a touch, um, but I was able to get everything wired up and work the way I wanted to. Okay, let's go back to one, uh, one view, and we're going to put my head inside my head. I'll just show you how I did that real quick. Really, you can put anything you want to in there. All you need to do is put it right in here with a merge node, um, so we can take a merge this in here, and we're just let's add a shape real quick so you can kind of see how this works. We've got a star and a and a render, we'll put that right into the merge. It sits right on top of there. So um, once this is set up, this is where we're, the overlays are gonna go. To get the stuff inside my head to look like it's coming out, we just need to add a quick mask. We'll put it right around the edge of my head part here. And then it can be however big you want, and we'll close it up. We'll take the output of this mask and put it into the merge. And we'll adjust this transform here. So now it looks like the star, if we move it, it's coming out of my head. Now this is set up, we can really put whatever we want to inside there. So we'll take the top part of my head and we'll move it out of the way a little bit. So I did some animations here where you can kind of, I move this around, you could adjust it, uh, change the angle, um, do lots of things here. But let's get rid of this star here. I'm gonna take the output of the magic mask, which is basically my head, and we're gonna put it right into this transform here. And adjust the size and angle. Bring the size down a little bit and move it over. And then we can bring it, uh, use the transform to bring it up and down and we have my head inside my head. So you can really put whatever you want to in here. There's a lot of things you can do with the, the shadowing and, and shading to make it look a little bit better. But these are just the basics. Um, some basic uh, masking where you use the bitmap nodes with the matte control nodes to mask stuff out. And let's go back to the timeline and you can see it's uh, overlaying on top of the clean plate. So when we so everything that is not my body is actually the clean plate from behind. So we're able to see through where my head is. Thanks so much for watching. If you're enjoying my videos, make sure that you like and subscribe. Any questions, comments, or feedback, leave them down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Talk to you soon.